All right, so I've got all my cartoon jumble layers. I've gotten rid of identifiable marks. There might be a little bit more editing I want to do just to, to make it look even better. I'll show you some other methods. So what I can also do is maybe I want everything within the fishbowl to be erased. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> so I don't want any other lines to be in the white space of this fishbowl from any other layer. So what I can do is I can select that fishbowl layer and I can use a new selection tool, which is a very common one we'll be using, which is why it's near the top. It's right under the lasso. It is the magic wand tool. It is not the quick selection tool. Since Photoshop has added so many new functions, each of these tools is a drawer to more tools. Right? But there are certain ones that I'll always have as my defaults. So the regular lasso tool, underneath that, you, you click on it until the drawer opens, and then select the magic wand tool. We don't use the quick selection tool in this class because it's sloppy. It's made to be fast, but it's not accurate. And we want to be accurate. We're, we're an art class, right? Not an Instagram filter class. So we're going to click on the magic wand, and we're going to look at the options up here. You want all the regular default options, but the tolerance, which defaults at 32, that's how sensitive this is. Now, the one thing we're going to change a lot is the tolerance, depending on what we're playing with, and whether we have this set to contiguous mode or not. I'm going to set mine to contiguous mode. This is a selection tool, not a painting tool, not anything else. I want to select the pixels that are the white pixels inside the cookie jar. <laughs> so what this does is it selects pixels and it selects all the pixels around that pixels that are similar within 32 percentage points, right? Are you 32% similar or not? So that's what the tolerance is. Now white, there's not a lot of variation in those colors, right? So that 32 is going to work great and the black is definitely not going to be it. So it's not going to select the black, it's only going to select the whites. And then I, just like with the lasso tool, I can hold down shift and I can add to it and select all of these shapes that are touching each other that are white. But I screwed up and I accidentally hit a black one and then it got all the touching. So I can do command Z, go back one step and try that selection again. Because it takes a little practice, you're actually selecting where the tip of the magic wand is. <laughs> not where the plus is or anything else. Okay, so I've selected most of that white space. If I zoom in, you can see those individual selections. So now, how do I delete that? Well, I'll just show you what that looks like. You know, if I delete it from the actual layer, it will delete all this, right? But I actually want to delete it from these other layers. And this is the really cool thing. I can move that selection. This is the layer I took it from, but if I have that selection active, it can move between layers. So now let's turn on this top layer. That selection will move with it. I can hit delete as long as that layer is selected and it will delete that content from that layer. Same with this layer, same with this layer. Same with my background layer. And now when I layer them all up, my fish bowl is coming through. Or my cookie jar bowl is coming through. All right. So that's another way you can kind of uh, delete away from things. Sometimes I'll just use the magic wand almost randomly with contiguous turned on. to select within a shape like that, and then just delete it from the other layers to open up some white space around it. So that's kind of nice. And when you feel like you've edited enough, oh, let me change this to multiply mode. It's my background. I want to delete a little bit from this.
It's always the last layer you try. <laughs> okay. So let's say that this is my cartoon jumble. This is what I like. I want to save it while it's all black and white at this level. Now, if I'm really being picky, I can zoom in and I can use my lasso to really refine it. And that's something I would do before I print it for an actual physical product. But right now, I think this is pretty good. So to save, I go to File. I've already named it, right, with my name and Exercise 1. So just File, Save. Simple. But that is a PSD file. That can only be opened in Photoshop. In order to turn this in, I want to make sure that I see it the way I want it to be seen, with the white background showing. And then I go to File, Save As. I keep the same name. I might just call it Carl Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble, because it's no longer a master file. I'm going to save it to the desktop, because this is a new file I'm creating. And this is the one I'm going to put up to PhotoBucket and turn in. So I need it to be a format that's able to go online. And the format I'm going to use that's able to go online, that saves the most memory but looks really good, um, that doesn't need to support transparency, is JPEG. So JPEG is the format. And it will warn me. It will say, um, I'm going to lose all my layers this way. And that's OK because my Photoshop file is saved, and that's the one with the layers. So I hit Save, and then you're going to get this option for, well, how, do you, how much do you want to compress it? How much memory do you want to save? In general, we want to always save um, so that our files are no bigger than 5 megabytes. So usually, we can, you, we can use a high-quality um, compression, like 10 to 12. I want you to do as large as possible as long as it's not over 5 megabytes. So for me, it's 3.5 megabytes at the highest quality compression. So that's great. Realize that that's a whole lot less than 217 megabytes that my Photoshop file takes. Okay, now we have a JPEG in black and white that we can upload to PhotoBucket. And so if you want to take a look at it, you can just double click on the JPEG. It will open up in preview. And you'll see it's one nice image all layered up in black and white. OK. Now I can go to PhotoBucket. You can use the links in the course. Remember, because I'm making this channel public and open source, I'm not going to tell you what our password is, but you can find it. <laughs> and if it gives you problems, just uncheck the remember me, put in the correct password from our Canvas site, and click log in. And you'll get to the NLC Arts Lab. If you see my little rotating head skull thing, you know you're in the right place, the right account. Go to the library. Use the side columns to navigate Digital Art 1, Digital Art or Digital One exercises. Exercise One, cartoons. You don't need to go to past student examples because you are current students, so you will upload to this folder. And the way you do it is you simply can drag and drop from the desktop right into that folder. So this folder will no longer be empty because I just put something in. Now, once it does it, you can click on it, and then you can give it a title. And I want you to always title in the same way this semester. We'll get used to it. You start with capital F A 18 for fall 2018, and then just your first name. That's all you need. Okay. And we have Drew and we have Andy. So we don't have two Andrews anymore. <laughs> so you just do that. So F18 Carl. If we do it that way, our work will all, will always know who who the work belongs to. And if we screw up and we don't actually title it, remember that the file name 
should still have our name in it. So if I need to, I can download it and see what the file name is. And sometimes we'll put them into the wrong folder, and that's why we have these exercises. You know, you'll figure out how to how to organize stuff. Someone's already added, so so we're good. Okay, now let's play with it. That's the main requirement. That meets the assignment. But what if we want to do more? What if we want to add color? What if we want to play with our black and white? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to merge these all into one layer. But I don't want to lose the option of the individual layers. So this is an incredibly helpful trick in Photoshop that I have never seen published anywhere. Okay, And the people I know that know it know it because someone they knew knew it and showed them. So I am now showing you. Okay. So in general, if we wanted to flatten this, we would go to layer and flatten image, but then we would lose access to all our layers. We can merge layers together. So I could hold down shift, select all the layers with actual cartoon reference in them, and I can merge those layers saying layer merge. Or I can merge them by turning the background off and say merge visible. But what I'm going to show you is that we can merge everything onto a new layer without damaging the old layers. And the way you do that is you go to layer, you hold down option, and you click on merge visible. So holding, holding down option while you do it does not merge them all into one layer. Instead, it puts that merge layer on top of all your resource layers. Then I can turn off all my resource layers, even my background, and I have one clean file. Now I'm going to use the magic wand. At a 32 tolerance, I'm going to uncheck contiguous and just click anywhere on the white. And that will select all the white pixels. And then I hit delete. And now I have one clean cut out normal mode. And because this is right in the middle, I might as well clean this up a little bit. I can't resist. Okay, so now I have a beautiful black single image, even though I have all the layers that created it underneath. Now I can play with color. And an easy way to do that is to just double click on the layer itself to get layer styles. And I can just do what's called a color overlay. Click on the color overlay. I can pick the mode. I'm just going to do normal mode. I'm going to do 100% opacity. And I get to pick whatever color I want from the color selector. So that's kind of the boring way to do color. Another way I can do it is not to do color overlay, but to do gradient overlay. And then same thing. Set it to normal mode. This will remember whatever was last used. Set it to 100% opacity and then choose a crazy gradient. We'll be learning how to make gradients later. Right? You can reverse it. You can set it at different angles. You can make it linear. That's kind of cool. Or you can add both of them. So I can take my gradient overlay and put that at 50%, and then add my color overlay back in, but take that down to 50%. And now I have both of them affecting it. But how does it look on white? Well, let's turn on that background white layer. And then what's great about layer styles, these effects, is just like layers themselves, you can turn them on and off. So that's only with the gradient. That's only with the color. That's with both. right? And you can double click and always adjust them. You can even set them at different blending styles. I kind of like that, with the lighter color is coming through on the gradient. So I get a nice kind of warm to cool. OK, so that's one way to do it. What's another way I can do it? I can uh, simply com composite in a new reference. So I'm going to try to do this really fast. I go do a Google image search. I'm running out of time. I'm going to pop in color from an outside source. I rasterize it. I can take that fabric, I can cut its shape out of it, and have a 